functional analysis. This is area. This is uh, x and has to x and has to have l to the zero length to the zero. It has to be all observers must come to the same x and so this should be balance and length and then d tau d sigma and so x mu has dimensions length sigma alpha has dimensions length l to the one so p would have l to the power minus okay in order that the x and remain uh, dimension less for the x and dimension less t would have the dimensions of l to the power minus t. Okay, so this t is uh, called as a k dimension, it is defined by 1 over twice pi alpha prime. Typical string length is twice pi square root of alpha prime, and that will be the number. Now, another important point Yes, so uh, What you have is uh, you we want to find the form of the DA differential uh, line element we would write ds square For all velocities less than the velocity of light, you can, you can write the infinite decimal quantity ds square is uh, ds square, and you can write ds square minus eta mu nu dx nu uh, for. But you, you don't need to specify for time like it's always greater. Okay, c square and d tau square is greater than the dx square. And now I can write it as d sigma theta. I can write dx mu over d sigma alpha, dx mu over d sigma theta, and this d sigma alpha, d sigma theta. And with that, I want to define a new object. And, uh, not minus, eta mu nu. So this is my uh, this is my definition of g alpha beta, and I remember that uh, this I would like to call g alpha beta. I would like to call it as the induced matrix on the bird sheet. This I would like to call as the induced matrix on the bird sheet. Why do we call it induced matrix? We call it induced matrix because in its definition it involves the eta mu nu, which is the metric of the space time manifold or the target space. Okay, so <coughs> uh, 
what is happening here is uh, you can write this as minus this is g alpha beta d sigma d beta. Right? With this new definition by introducing g alpha beta, I can write it as this. And now there is a very interesting physical point. You see, here this ds square in my space-time manifold measures the distances in this space-time manifold. Okay, ds square measures the distances in the space-time manifold of a target space. Right? Here. It measures the distances in the world city space. It measures the distances in the world city space. And that brings out the meaning of this G alpha beta. I, I remember uh, Eugenia had uh, asked me something related to this. I made up my mind. I thought uh, for a proper understanding of the super string theory, we must have a short recap of the basic points of the bosonic string theory. So we can skip a few derivations here and there. If we need, we can do them. But we must not skip on the uh, conceptual points. We must not skip on the conceptual points. And why we call it induced? For this very simple reason that you have this eta mu nu here. So, the definition of this matrix G alpha beta includes by definition eta mu nu which is the which happens to be the metric of the target space of the space time manifold okay and <clears throat> in that case these two things so ds square uh, described in this manner major distance in the target space described in this manner major distance in the Okay, very good. That was uh, one important point which I wanted to which I wanted to clarify. And now we could do some more simple things. Let us introduce some mm, Let us introduce some of these notations which are x mu dot h delta x mu and x prime mu h space derivative of x mu. Okay, that is space derivative, this is time derivative. So, <coughs> for example, g tau tau, I could write as uh, eta uh, mu nu dx mu over d tau and this this I could write as eta mu nu x mu dot x mu dot this I could eventually write as x mu dot x mu dot which is sometimes also written as x dot square which is x dot dot x dot if you like okay uh, the in a way the product of two x mu so you, you will find all these uh, different notations so let me make you familiar with all these notations that are being used in the literature now if i have g tau sigma eta mu nu dx mu, this is tau, this is x mu, this is sigma, so eta mu nu, x mu dot, x prime mu, okay, x prime mu, if I like, I can write it as x mu dot, x prime mu, if I like, I can write it as x mu dot x prime. You, you will find it in different authors use different notations. I make you familiar with all of them. Similarly, if you would write g 
uh, sigma tau, this would be dx mu, d sigma here, dx mu d tau here, eta mu x, not dot, but prime mu and x dot mu, this would be x prime dot x dot. So I have I have this mu here and mu here. Okay. And you could have G sigma sigma. Similarly, eta mu mu dx mu d sigma dx mu d sigma eta mu mu x prime mu x prime mu this would be x prime mu x prime mu if you like you could write it as x prime so, so with this you can and not only you have written all the all the uh, non vanishing elements of this uh, matrix g alpha beta tau 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 sigma sigma tau sigma sigma uh, at a later stage you could do this also in the light front uh, coordinates so they would be let me just symbolically g plus plus g plus minus g minus plus and g minus minus you can obtain all those components in terms of the, they, they, they are they are very simple i will tell you the how to go from one